Okay, here's one more look for running one more hour at 5,000 RPM this time. And everything is looking very good. Not seeing any signs of uh, problems on the lifters. So tomorrow I'll probably get a little more serious and uh, just basically let it run at 4500 or 5000 RPM for uh, probably 8 to 10 hour a day and then we'll take a look. Well we're back. Got up and started this thing up before breakfast this morning. and it's been running a little over four hours between four and five thousand rpm i've been varying it up and down a bit when i'd come out to check it And it's looking really nice. As are the cam followers. There's no signs of distress there at all. So I'm going to put this thing back together and run it another five or six hours but this time I'm going to be a little tougher on the cam and I'm going to back the RPM down to oh, around 2000. Be back then. Well, here we are with two more hours of running, uh, roughly one hour at 2,000 RPM and one hour at 2,500 RPM. I've not been using the cooling fan. So our, so our temperature now is uh, roughly 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not producing as much heat anymore as it did when before the cam was broken in. I'm going to pull the uh, barrel off and take another look and uh, and then I'll put it back together for most likely the final run. So we're now at around 10 hours of run time and I don't see anything on the cam that would indicate problems. Followers would look really good.
so I think I'm going to put it back together and run it up to red line, basically 6500 and run it for something like an hour and then probably back it off to uh, idle speed for a while and uh, make sure that uh, everything still looks good. Well, here we are, button back up. Valve clearances have been checked. They grew by maybe a half a thousandth over today's running. And uh, we're going to take it up to Redline for an hour and see if there's any changes. Here we go. Well, here we are, one more hour. The first half hour was at 6,500 RPM. Then I decided to push it a little more and the last half hour has been at 7,500 RPM. Oil and barrel temperatures are over 200 now. And as soon as things cool off enough to touch, I'm going to pull the barrel off and have another look at the lifters. So here we are. After 6,500 and 7,500 for the hour. The cam is not showing any signs of distress at all. Looking good. And the lifters or followers look very nice. I am starting to see the first sign of a line down the center of the follower. that is indication of a little bit of loft at high RPM and that would be expected because at the spring pressure I have on the engine right now uh, 7500 RPM is actually a little too fast to prevent uh, valve train separation. And valve train separation over peak is what causes that little line.
down the center of the lifter. So basically, I'm going to put this back together and I'm going to give it one of the toughest camshaft tests there is. And that is I'm going to idle it for half an hour or so and see if I get any scuffing. Well, it's been running for 35 minutes at idle. Uh, idle speed was roughly a thousand, somewhere between a thousand and eleven hundred RPM. And since eleven hundred RPM is definitely the lowest I would ever uh, recommend for an idle speed on a Norton. We will uh, take a look and see what she looks like. Well, here we are after 35 minutes of idling. And I would call this the uh, first successful test of, uh, of a hard welded cam follower. Seeing any distress there. And as you can see by the uh, damage to the barrel, uh, not all the tests have gone quite this well. Also, uh, wiped out the other two lobes on my cam that's in my spintron right now. So, I'm going to say the hard welded lifter is uh, ready for installation in my next motor, unless something better comes along in the meantime. Thanks for watching.